All right, guys, time for another video. And this is sparked by rumors that there has been a famous YouTuber, um, Misha Sharodin, I don't know how you pronounce it, sorry, mate, who has been driving the Nordschleife with Jimmy Broadband and Super GT in a M3, M4, I think M4. And who also just kind of spends his life driving the Nordschleife. And he was a pictured as at Kuno's headquarters with a screen blocked. So we were being teased and now everybody assumes the Nordschleife is coming to ACC. Let's assume for a second that is the case. Is the game actually ready to do that? And that's what this video will be about. And like so many good videos, this one will start with a PDF, which is this one. Um, that is the entire kind of rule book or whatever for last year's 24 hours Nürburgring race. Um, and what you'll find in there, for example, is regulations around right height, restrictors, whatever. And the important thing is, is right height here. And it's German and English, so it's pretty perfect. If you just look here, um, and right height is a bit weirdly defined IRL, they don't tell you, well, your minimum right height is 70 millimeters. They are telling you at all times, it must be possible to move a roll with a dimension 300 times 70 millimeters freely under the vehicle. Um, so 70 millimeters is, <laughs> is what we're targeting here, um, which means in a lot of cars in ACC, that is actually, I'll, I'll link this, okay? So don't worry about it, I'll link it. Um, so in ACC often, if we go to the car setup page, 70 millimeters actually the maximum ride height and who in their right mind in the game would currently use maximum ride height if they want to go fast. Additionally, we know from the past, and it changed a bit with a 1.9 patch, but in the past, suspension were kind of tricky, to say the least, in ACCs with cars bouncing wildly, not being able to take any curbs, um, and things like that. With 1.9, this got a little better, but still we have situations where the cars are rather tricky to handle bumps. So Nordschleife, being one of the very bumpy tracks out there, probably the most challenging with track going up and down, high curves, very narrow. The track to challenge a car. Is ACC suspension ready for it? Is the game ready? How do the cars behave if we are forced to higher ride heights? And what are the rules are there? So. Just before we dive into the game and the setup screen, let's look at another PDF, which is this one taken from the from the same uh, file, really. And but what this concerns is the the rake here. This is what I want to show you additionally. Um, and I asked a couple smart people what all the abbreviations mean, and it appears to be that MI is for Michelin, Yokohama. Um, Falcon, Pirelli, so tire manufacturers. So what they're regulating here is the car's rake. So the difference from front to rear right height expressed as an angle, not in terms of millimeters like we typically do in the game. Thankfully, there are calculators online or if you're kind of good in math and didn't forget your uh, geometry lessons, then you can calculate this triangle yourself. But just as a rough reference um the allowed rake angle in the bmw roughly result in something like um 0.16 uh, is the angle and that relates to 14 millimeters of rake so sorry for the stumble there um how do i get to that number here is uh, the rake is defined as 0.04 degrees, but there is a range around that plus minus 0.12 degrees. So combine these and then we have 0.16 degrees, which is the maximum rake angle under the car. Put that in a calculator, which I did here, then press calculate and you get the maximum right height difference or what we call the rake um, in, in the game. Okay, so 14 millimeters is the maximum allowed rake on the BMW, for example. It's quite different for other cars, right? This this is double the, the rake angle, but we also know inside ACC, the Aston is 
pretty much always running maximum rake. So it's like 30, 40 millimeters normally. So it kind of stays um, allowed like that. We also know from the Mercedes, they run more rake than the BMW. Uh, so I guess this all kind of makes sense. The AMG is also a, a bit shorter car. So the angle is a bit steeper with the same amount of millimeter difference. Forget that, okay? Just to show you, this is being regulated. So let's keep the 14 millimeters in mind for the BMW. And then I think we just go to the game. And I have, of course, prepared this a little. So there's plenty of setups, but here is the Nordschleife setup that I've been preparing. The majority of information you need from here is we're going to the right height tab first to crank up the millimeters to the minimum that we have to use on the Nordschleife, assuming that Kunos is going to take that. But I guess they do because it's a thing in the GT4 class on other tracks in the game. So this all exists. 70 millimeters. Let's come from a normal setup. Let's start there. It's probably something around that is the normal setup. And you can see down here, the front error variation 4.6%. Now, if we are forced to go to 70 millimeters, the error balance changes quite drastically, which means the car is going to get a very understeery. And we crank up the rake and we are still far negative. So there's going to be a huge impact in the aerodynamic balance of the car, which is already why I removed some wing. But still, with, with more wing, it would be even worse. And I can already tell you, I tested a couple cars, that this is going to be somewhat of a pattern that we're going to see across all cars, that if you increase the right height to the minimum we need to run on the Nordschleife for the 70 millimeters, then there's so much front and downforce taken away that we likely need to balance the car out using lower rear wing, which gives us probably a little more top end, not too much though. Um, there will be some more changes we need to do to, to the setup. So something in the springs to get the car to rotate, but it's all not that surprising and important. So we don't need to look at this too long really, um, but we need to drive. And there are a couple things I found really interesting that I also kind of did not expect. Let's for you, right from that camera and do a couple laps to find out how this all could be once we have the notch life i'm going to the gp track because i think that's that's the closest we'll be to the notch life and i can immediately tell you it feels like the car is very understeery and that's already with a couple fixes that i did the other thing we'll find is once the tires have heated up is that the car is much more compliant now, much more forgiving, which makes sense when the car sits higher, has more range to play with, and is easier to put on the softer springs that we often use and need in ACC anyway. And what surprised me the most, I have to say, is uh, I was expecting a much bigger lap time impact because we often fight so hard to put the car the lowest we possibly can to generate a bit more downforce get rid of some drag um, but in the end lap time wise on the Nürburgring I'm losing about one second which is really not as much as I was expecting it's more like I would have thought okay this is probably going to be really bad more in the I don't know two second area potentially, but just being one second off really surprised me here. Um, but then if I started to think about it a bit more, you can tell that there are a couple benefits from running higher as well. As I already said, it's going to be more compliant. The car gives the driver more time, kind of tells you about all the movement it's going to do. It goes slower into and out of the slip angle. Just because everything around the car is kind of slowed down now, every movement takes a bit longer and communicates with the driver a bit better over longer periods of time. And, and this way, you just feel much more comfortable. You're 
less likely to going to be surprised. Small slides start a little slower. They don't go as extreme. You have more time to correct it. Everything is kind of tuned down a little just by putting the cars higher. And the other thing that I notice it, it also offers you new lines. As you might have been able to tell just there with the braking on the very outside of turn five here, when you have the ride height very low, you often get into a situation where the front end of the car bottoms out because we're simply too low. And now with 70 millimeters of ride height, this is this problem has completely disappeared and I can actually comfortably use more track there. Additionally, let's just go through the Schumacher S here while this, uh, well, I missed it because the car is so understeery. But you can also take much more curb now. You, you can take that before on the low setup, but it is, well, much more likely that it can go wrong. The car is not handling the bump too well. And uh, that was a bit tricky. So you kind of took the curb and qualifying, but in the race, you might have taken a little more care and drove around it. The other thing is in that chicane, and now let me actually try to hit it break a little earlier, get the turn in earlier, then you can easily go over the additional curbs there now, just with a higher ride height. So this opens up new lines, really. And I get the feeling, and we should probably just pause right here, go to the replay, and have a look at that um, chicane. Go to the outside of the car, and all we want to see is how the car behaves over the curbs, because I found that very interesting that we often see the cars bouncing wildly with the when the suspension sits low and we're hitting the curb here right on and if you look at the car it just lands there's no second bounce there the car doesn't lift off the ground the second time or something let's check on the right side as well have a look from this angle slow it down a little when we go over the other side of the curb and also here, the car just eats the curbs and the BMW did not like that corner in particular before. And I can already tell you, this is the same in all the cars I tested. I tested the Porsche, the Lambo, and also the Nissan even. The Nissan is slow and it's not gonna get faster from that, but the same effect appears across all cars with there generally being more compliance available, which makes me think the Nordschleife might not be so bad overall. But I want to show you even more, and that is in the telemetry. Okay. Now we got the telemetry open, and this is really what I did earlier today. So I managed to do a 52.9 in 24, 25 degrees even, with a maximum ride height setup, okay? And pretty much the, the best I think we done in preparation for SRO was this 52.3 in, was it 26, 27 degrees or something? And I know the car probably does 52.0 zero in 23 degrees, but all that is beyond the point here, right? Um, my main point is that we should probably have a look at what is actually happening to the car. And that was one additional effect that I want to bring up. So let's bring the traction control and ABS a little higher so we can have a look at that. Because I found it really interesting what, what happened now that the car was not softer because I actually used harder springs, but the car was better simply because it sat higher and had more room to play with in the suspension without always running into the bump stops or with excess energy running into the chassis. So if we just go to accent of turn one, scroll down a bit, what we can see is the, the solid line represents the lap I did today with high ride heights and the dotted lines represent the uh, fast lap I did back then. Both use the same electronics. The inputs are rather similar. Um, I think we want to go to the turn two exit, for example, where you can see that the lap today, despite aggressive throttle here, we don't really have a traction control engagement until very late. You could say yes on that other lap you did. There was also just one engagement. So let's check a few more corners. And I felt like the the pattern keep 
or kept being there. The, the closer we or the closer I looked, the more I saw that in various situations, the traction control was engaging less with the high ride height, which kind of indicates the car had more mechanical grip. And I think if we go further to turn five and six, for example, you can see it much better here as well. The, the pattern in the driving, the throttle application here, very similar. And you can see there was no traction control intervention at all for the maximum ride height setup. And also out of turn six here, the intervention on maximum ride height was just a lot more rare or less severe or whatever than we have with the low ride height setup, which eventually is faster, but here are more side effects um, that I just wanted to highlight. And that really goes on. And for some reason, I even gained a little time here in, in turn five, six and turn seven. Uh, this usually changes the, the bigger the area becomes you're looking at, right? So if we add the straight on, on top of here, you can see that the higher ride height setup, it's always a bit slower on the straight because of course it produces more drag. So that is to be expected, right? But if you could look at the corners in isolation and they're fairly low speed, so aerodynamic doesn't play as much of the role, the car did get better with higher ride height, more room to play with, or at least we can say it did not get worse, which might be the more important part here. Um, so which all kind of made me think that ACC is a bit better than we're expecting it to be, or ex I expected it to be. I was thinking that we might have huge problems with the notch life on the horizon. Uh, I was actually concerned that the suspension we have in the game, we know there are issues are going to cause some trouble. But then if you consider that the BOP forces the cars to be rather high, which is, I think, an aftermath of a big crash that was there in 2015, 16 or something, um, that, that actually kind of helps the game to perform at its best. And it really seems to be like some of the issues we have with the game are really starting with not going exploit setups, but always going to the limits of what the setup screen allows us, in this case being the lowest ride heights uh, available. The other thing that we were able to see, it didn't highlight it before, was just that currently, I think they, they probably have to make changes to the limits in the setup screen that exist, simply um, because as I said, the, the allowed uh, rake of the car would translate to something like 14 millimeters. And right now that's just outright impossible because we want to go to 84 in that case. Um, but yeah, generally that, that shouldn't be a big challenge for, for Kunas to do. So well, I was a bit unsure if ACC could actually take the Nordschleife, I'm now a bit more optimistic that once the track or if the track comes to the game, we'd actually be able to enjoy it. And I think that was the main point of the video. And I'll close out with some more footage from good old AC and how the game could be. Bye.